Hi everyone, today I wanted to share a recent presentation I gave for the PMA Food Surface Conference, which was a virtual event held for 2020. It was titled, A Behind the Scenes Look at How Lettuce is Grown and Harvested, showing the hard work and innovation that goes into bringing six different types of lettuce to the market. So if you are even somewhat remotely familiar with me or my website or my YouTube, you know that this is my absolute favorite thing to talk about, is the behind the scenes of where produce comes from. Um, but I don't often get the chance to compare and contrast. So in this presentation, that's what I'm going to do. So to start us off, just a little bit about me. I am a produce blogger. I have the ProduceNerd.com website and my YouTube channel. My goal is to teach people where produce comes from and encourage them to eat more. My background is in post-harvest quality and food safety, which I'm so thankful for because it has really helped me to tell these behind-the-scenes stories accurately. So back to lettuce. So what we're used to seeing lettuce as, we're used to seeing it in a salad or maybe one or two pieces on a burger or a sandwich when we're heating out. Or maybe you're to the point where you're like, should I buy romaine or should I buy iceberg this week? This week, which is fantastic. But there is so much more to lettuce. So today we're gonna to talk about six different types of lettuce that's grown six different ways. So first we have romaine hearts, and you might be looking at this picture and say, hey, that's not romaine hearts. And you're right, this is ro these are heads of romaine, but that is how romaine hearts start. So to give you an idea, this is a field of romaine hearts, this is how it's grown, and this is the end product, these are the romaine hearts. So in this video you can see that this is how romaine hearts are harvested. So they harvest the heads of romaine, they remove the outer leaves, the tops and bottoms, and the end result are these lighter green leaves, the interior leaves, and that is what is referred to as the romaine heart. So in this case, these are going onto the processor, um, which is why they are in plastic containers instead of final packaging for the consumer. So we have baby romaine versus romaine, and what's the difference? The difference is that they can be the same type of lettuce, same type of romaine, the only difference is with baby romaine that it's grown closer together and for a shorter period of time, resulting in a smaller head of romaine. So to give you an example for baby romaine, this is how baby romaine is harvested, very similar process. They're harvested from the ground, the outer leaves are removed, they are sprayed with water, and packed into a box. And if you'll notice in, in this example, the videos or the pictures, you'll notice how much smaller, significantly smaller, these heads of romaine are compared to the previous example. And then next we have endive, which is beautiful green lettuce. Uh, I went on the perfect day to get footage of this type of lettuce. Something you would recognize in a sandwich or a burger. Um, so in this case, it's another similar harvest, right? You have the the work here let's try it again the workers are removing the outer leaves they trim the bottom and then it goes up the packing table they are packed into the boxes and they are rinsed you might be saying okay we've already seen examples of that so for one this is a very similar process for leafy greens and this two this is a large scale production uh, operation and three i really want you to notice that this is endive that's grown outdoors and that it's super green because for our next example we have belgian endive so belgian endive you'll see on the left is a red variety and then on the right it's white this is all grown indoors and you will also notice that they are not green so they start out as these chicory roots that are grown and harvested they're grown outdoors and harvested then they come to the cooler they need to receive a certain amount of chilling hours and then they're planted into these growing trays these growing trays then go into a dark room, which you'll notice in this picture, You're like, hey, what's that? That's a flashlight. So you can see here, this is how they grow. They grow in these stacks of growing trays in the dark rooms, and that light that you see is a flashlight from the person that's giving me a tour. So there is no light to be seen, which explains the lack of green on the Belgian endive. And then when they're ready to be harvested, they go into cold storage overnight, and then the the growing trays are brought into this harvesting packing room. It's all in one room. And then you can see here they're harvested. The Belgian endive are essentially just snapped off of the growing trays. And then they go down the packing line where the outer leaves are removed and they're trimmed up to look, to look extra pretty during packaging, as you can see in this example up here. And then next we have Blonde Frise, which 
I had never seen or heard of this before I went there. And I still have never seen anything like that except for this, this similar concept with Belgian endive. So this you'll see on the left, this is a field of frise, which looks like a typical lettuce field, but it's not because if you look closer, you'll notice that each plant has rubber band around it, which is an extremely labor intensive process. Like, can you imagine every single plant getting a rubber band around it? So this rubber band is placed there seven to 10 days before harvest in order to remove sun exposure from the plant. The harvesting process looks similar from afar. They, the workers bend down, they move the other leaves, put it up to the packing table where they're washed and packed. And they do look a little different, the end product here. But what actually needs to be done is that the rubber band needs to be removed and then the upper leaves and the outer leaves all need to be removed because they are marketing and selling this product as blonde frise. So that's all that's going to be included. And the rest of the leaves just go back, go back into the soil. So here is your end product of the blonde frise. And then lastly, we have lettuce mixes. So you might be looking at this field and go, Oh, wow, that's such a beautiful field of lettuce. And it really truly is, but I want you to pay attention to the fact that there are different types of lettuce being grown. So there's a few rows of this kind, a few rows of this kind, a few rows of that kind. Um, and the companies do this because when they create the mixes, there's certain types of lettuces that are included in each mix and they plant them next to each other at the same time so they can harvest them neck at all at the same time because they all need to be mixed in together and go from there. So the harvesting for this type of lettuce, you can see here on the left is the harvesting machine. It's essentially a mower. So what happens is when they mow these leaves of lettuce, they just come up. There's one or two workers that place the lettuce into bins and then send them over to the adjacent trailer and they go off to the processor. So the point of this presentation was if you're getting bored, don't let yourself fresh produce is so exciting. You can get more excited about what you're serving by learning about where it comes from. Ask questions, encourage growers to share. My One of my favorite things to do on Instagram is just message random growers or packers asking them questions. And if I can get about an 85% response rate, I'm sure you can do the same, if not better. Um, and look up other sources such as my website or YouTube. If you want to learn about fresh produce, where it comes from, I have a ton of videos for you. But also different growers have a ton of videos for you because they want to share what they're doing. And people like you and people like me, we want to learn. So there are resources available. And if you can't find what you're looking for, ask and hopefully you'll be able to find something. You can also try an alternative to what you are currently using. So for example, if you're somebody who likes to eat romaine salads often and then you start getting bored of romaine, try a different type of lettuce such as blonde frise or endive. You can also use something entirely different. So just because one healthy thing has run its course doesn't mean you can't mix up your dish with something else. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a great day. And if you would like to subscribe for mo more produce related content, please click subscribe to my YouTube channel.